like to talk to you today about when God uses integration. If you study the Bible, the whole Bible, you'll see that God is a segregationist. God keeps people separate. There's a reason for that. Let's start out in Genesis chapter 11, beginning in verse 6. Here you have the Tower of Babel. See what happens here. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. There's always this push, push among the lost world. Let's all be one. Let's all be together. Let's all have, you know, this one world, whatever. Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Contrary to popular opinion, by the way, God doesn't want man to just be able to do whatever he wants. God sets boundaries. God sets limits and says, hey, don't mess with that. Don't get into this and, and whatever. Modern man says, oh, uh, we can do this now that we used to be forbidden to do. Uh, so we're, we're progressing. No, actually, you're getting worse. Verse 7, go to, let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad from the, up, upon the face of all the earth. God told them to spread out the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and he gave them each a unique prophecy and said, this is what your descendants are going to do. Now spread out. And some of them said, okay, yes, we will. And they did spread out. Others said, uh, no, actually, we're going to come together. And we're going to have one language and we're going to have one church and we're going to have one government and one this and one that. Let's all come together. And, you know, and God said, I, I don't want that. But you say, well, then how does God use integration? Well, there is one exception to this thing of God saying, stay separate. Look all through the Old Testament. Don't go marry their daughters. Don't go, don't go intermingle with them and stay away from them and whatever else. There is one exception to this. Go to the book of Zephaniah. Zephaniah 3. The God of the Bible, uh, He knows what's best. He is all-powerful. He is all-knowing. And uh, people always try to bring God down to their level. Because uh, when Satan said, you can be as gods, knowing good and evil, well, if you're going to be God, you don't want competition. You want... Uh, the God of the Bible to be on your level of wickedness. But uh, the God of the Bible is different than that. The God of the Bible, uh, he does things according to his own will. He doesn't need our opinions or, well, I'll just, you know, I'll have democracy. And if the popular vote is such and such, then okay. That's not the God of the Bible. Zephaniah 3 and verse 8. Here's where God uses integration. You ready? All you one-worlders, here you go. Here's your, your, your uh, theme verse, your, your special verse that helps your system. See, you're all about God as a meanie and He won't let us, let us come together. Actually, God is going to bring you together in the end times, and it's happening right now, here in 2021. Let's read. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord. The Lord's speaking here. Until the day that I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations. Hmm, integration. That I may assemble the kingdoms. He's bringing everybody together. Why? To pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Is God using integration right now? Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to defeat the new world order. Let's restore the republic. We're going to stop. You're not going to stop it. Why? Because God is the one that's doing it. All the Illuminati and the Jesuits and the Bilderbergers and the World Economic Forum and the Great Reset and... Uh, you know who's behind it? God. The Lord Jesus Christ, Almighty God, is bringing them together. Hmm. Let's look at a New Testament... Uh, tie into this. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, beginning in verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. So you can drop your little 
little uh, self-righteous, sanctimonious thing of, oh, I just can't believe in a God that would, that would uh, you know, just keep people in the dark. God shows things to you. God shows things to people out there. Nobody has an excuse. Nobody can say, I don't see any proof for God. I, 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 I don't really know if God exists. Let's continue. Verse 20, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. <laughs> being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Oh, we are, we are, uh, I'm doctor, PhD, I am THD, I am this, I am that, I'm the honorable so-and-so, and we're all coming together. We are the Knights of Malta, we are the Knights of the Equestrian Order, look at us, we're wise, we're intelligent. Bill Gates, one of the smartest men that's ever lived in the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and we're building a brave new world. You're fools. A bunch of wicked, stupid fools. They look out here at this and they say it came from a random mistake at some unknown time in the past. You're an idiot if you believe that. There's no nice way to put it. You're a fool, you see? You profess yourself to be wise and yet you're a fool. And these people are just, they're, they're high on this power trip, this whole pandemic lockdown thing. They're just, it's a power trip. And they're just, oh, we can force people to do things against their will. And oh, look how powerful we're becoming. And we're going to have our new world order soon. You bunch of fools, you're falling into a trap. But it's just too intoxicating. It's just, it's just, there's too much power there to let go of it. There's too much money to be made. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're going to go right into it. God's assembling them right now and saying, oh, yeah, go come together. Yeah, sure, you can have your little... Uh, forums and your little all these little rich men coming together and flying in in their private jets and everything else and building this yeah sure yeah absolutely so the lord can just smash them like a bug i realize most people that are in that system are never going to come out of it they're going to stay right in it they're they're, they're not going to leave the, the foolish Jesuits with their, we're the wisest people out there and we're all this, we have all this control and everything else. They're not coming out. Um, most of these people are going to go right into God's wrath and into his judgment. Um, so what's this little sermon here really all about? Mostly it's directed to the Christians, to the body of Christ. Um, there are people that get saved all the time. They're, they're babes in Christ newly saved, they, you might not understand. You might get a little bit frustrated with uh, what all is going on and everything else. And you think, is God really in control? Oh, God is very much in control. God is using the integration movement that we're seeing all around the world right now to fulfill his will, the purpose that he has. The time of Jacob's trouble is coming. And in that time, God is going to pour out his wrath and his judgment on this earth, the likes of which this world has never seen before. Um, don't think for one second uh, that th somehow that uh, the whole, you know, great tribulation, it's called the time of Jacob's trouble, it's somehow this bad thing that's coming and, and it's the new world order and their power and, and the Lord's just up in heaven, you know, biting his fingernails going, oh no, I didn't think it was going to get this bad. The Lord's causing all of it. There's not one second of it that God doesn't cause as his judgment. It's the Lord that opens the seals and lets the Antichrist come out and get the whole thing started. And the posters, the post-trib people and everything, they'll deceive you like crazy on this and all. It's just the Lord's just watching what happens. What a bunch of wicked, satanic devils. Deceivers. I'm going to, going to be talking more about this post-trib thing here as we continue uh, through some videos I'm going to be shooting today. But the Lord is in control. The Lord is in charge of everything. So why are you afraid of what man can do to you? You better think about that. All right? Uh, we shouldn't fear. Our God is in control. And if you're not on the right side, if you watch this and you're not really saved and whatever, well, you better get saved. Because if not, you're going to be facing the wrath of Almighty God. So that's going to be it for this study. 
and uh, we will see you in upcoming videos.